My name is Rashawn Richards, and I'm an educator, researcher, and app developer from the New York City area. I'm a longtime K-12 teacher and administrator, and now I also teach higher education and continue with my entrepreneurial exploits as an app developer for a company called Explain Everything. My focus has been on the intersection of technology and teaching and more recently in the last six, seven years uh, on assessment and not what people might associate with assessment as far as testing or exams, but really trying to best uncover where a student is in his or her learning and how as teachers or leaders of learning, how we use the best tools available to us to help uh, with that examination and that uncovering of understanding. I guess when you talk about assessment, you have to think about uh, not just about what it looks like as far as the process of learning, but first of all, how people learn. And then of course, well, what's worth learning and what's worth knowing. So I think it's important to first be able to go back and define knowledge and, and what it means to a person. And I think that can take different shapes and forms depending on context and upbringing and one's own education. For me, I think about knowledge as stuff that uh, you might know, well, of course, like facts, things that can be transmitted. Somebody could tell me something and then I could know it. Uh, it could also be steps or instructions, uh, processes or procedures that I can know how to do something. And then, of course, knowing the complexity of certain relationships and systems and things like that. Uh, those are all types of knowing. Now, how one learns those things, how one learns facts, how learns processes, learns the complex relationships within systems, well, there's many ways to do that. Some might say it's by sitting and listening to somebody talking about it or engaging in some sort of activities or recall of such information. Uh, many will say it's through experience. Some through it say it's through uh, just sight or through movement or motion. And so those are all tied to cognitive channels and the way that your brain operates. And it's not so much that you always have to hit every single one of those things, but to recognize there's stuff to know and there are many ways to know it. So when you, you know, that's an oversimplified way of looking at knowledge and learning. But then when you start talking about assessment of learning and the assessment of learning of knowledge, uh, I think it just goes to show how complex of a conversation that is. So going back to definitions, when I think about assessment, Maybe some people call it formative assessment or anecdotal assessment uh, or even informal assessment. But what I'm most interested in is not assessing that something was learned, but instead the assessment of how something was learned and how you make learners and teachers more aware of that process. And this is where I think technology has the greatest potential. Things that were previously not possible to do are much more readily available. So for example, if I uh, was had some device or was going through some learning experience and I had a technological tool with me, there's so many ways I can document the learning experience. So for if I was learning about a particular topic, um, through whatever was going on, just the fact that a mobile device, a laptop, any kind of computer, the fact that it has a camera, it's this very simple thing that a teacher, a learner can take a photograph of any given moment and be able to say, this is what was happening in that moment of time. 10, 15 years ago, it wasn't so easy to be able to do that. That becomes, yes, an artifact that somebody can look at, maybe has to reflect upon and, and see what it is. But just that reflection and looking back and taking a snapshot of that moment, that's a type of assessment that perhaps people haven't paid attention to or haven't known it was worth paying attention to simply because it wasn't something that was ubiquitous. A photograph is one type of media. There's the screenshot capturing what's happening on a computer screen or making a movie or making a screencast. Those are all types of media creation um, efforts that previously weren't accessible to learners. So, or previously as accessible uh, in you know, modern teaching environments. So it's the collection of, of media authoring and documenting what's happening during any type of learning activity that I think has, that, that I think that technology has the greatest potential uh, to aid. You know, my, my research has been based on specifically screencasting as a form of demonstrating or representing understanding. 
So, well, what's screencasting? That's capturing what's happening on a device screen along with the audio narration uh, and being able to maybe talk through or explain what's going on. A lot of screencasts are used to make maybe polished tutorials, uh, expl explanations of how to do certain steps, but I actually think that there's more power and potential in using screencasts for quick checks for understanding or cap capturing these kind of unpolished moments of what's really going on in, the, in, in a classroom, in a, in a crazy chaotic learning environment. So, you know, when I started to get into screencasting, it was because I was teaching middle school math and uh, I had access to an interactive whiteboard and a computer and uh, I learned about a tool that would allow you to record what was happening on the computer with the audio. Now, my first in instinct was, oh, I can, when I'm going to be out and need a, uh, need a substitute to cover my material, I can record uh, a video of myself talking through and, and writing out the steps to, how to solve a certain problem. But then I thought, oh, well, what would happen if instead of me doing this, I had my students creating this content? And that's how I started to see that through students creating screencasts to demonstrate what they know. As a teacher, I got a much different lens on what, to the, what they really understood as opposed to just seeing it on a static uh, worksheet or quiz or a test like that. And so that started to influence my interest in researching screencasting as a form of uh, formative assessment and ongoing assessment and then eventually led to the development of Explain Everything. So I think to sum up the the amazing things that technology allows us to do uh, isn't just about making things more efficient, making testing of knowledge and facts more efficient and uh, trying to reduce kind of a very important and very personal relationship between students and students, students and teachers, uh, just into metrics and say, oh, so, such and such student got a certain score and I can display this on a graph and pull it up on a website. But instead, the tools that we have uh, should be used to help try to make that relationship a little bit more human, a little bit more personal. And that's where I think media really uh, is very important and is, is so powerful. I think many schools try to, uh, I think that many schools get a little intimidated by uh, the things that are possible, especially even on phones, as far as capturing different moments in time. At the same time, you're already seeing young people doing this out of school, documenting every moment of their lives through photographs and videos and posting them on social media. So there's this natural instinct to capture what's going on. And I think that we should be able to harness that energy and that kind of natural instinct that young people have and see what that might ha uh, see how that might take place in the classroom.